All right, we're starting the recording so we can post it if anybody misses class. Um, now, I'm not recording the group meetings anymore, but I record the beginning part of the class. Um, I figured the group meeting's kind of repetitive. Uh, all right, what was I doing? Oh, chat, participants, share, multiple. No, that's not what I want. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes sir. positive. All right, good. Okay, ten seven. All right, so uh, today we're going to talk a bit more about the research paper. Let's see if I've got a yeah, good. Only that's not my um, full lecture. Hold on. So English only two syllabus. This should have it. Okay, yeah. It's got the grading. It's got everything the other one has and some other stuff. All right. So, if you notice, we have a very similar uh, grading criteria for both the uh, fiction essay, the poetry essay, and the research paper. Uh, the only difference for the research paper is that you have to use research materials, uh, but use them in basically the same way that you use materials from the primary source, that is, uh, in making your argument and your analysis. So let's go over the criteria. First, you have to have a thesis. And if you have forgotten the thesis, I have a link to the thesis exercises. Uh, it's a simple declarative sentence uh, making the point you're trying to demonstrate in your paper. Um, everything from this point on in academia will have a thesis, whether it's a 20 page uh, technical report, or if you manage uh, or decide someday to get a master's and you have to do what they call a thesis and a thesis, guess what, has a thesis. And then if you go into doctoral work, uh, you'll write a dissertation and it too can be boiled down into one sentence. So uh, it's like an acorn that an oak grows from, however big it gets, uh, it all still comes from that one short, simple sentence. So it's really important to, um, to get that right and to have it focused and narrow and well-worded and all the other stuff. Also, uh, we have a review of the, or a link back to our bibliography, which we did one day, but you can uh, go through it again. Um, here's our simple research paper, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, oh, and here we are back to our, uh, I think that's the same thing, except this one's a little longer. Okay, don't. Number one rule, <coughs> do not retell the story. Uh, most of you did not do that with uh, your fiction essay, which is good. Uh, a couple of you uh, did retell the story, which is not so good. Uh, it must not be a retelling. If I could write as well, well, if you could write as well as Hawthorne, uh, you wouldn't be in the class. If I were able to write as well as Hawthorne, I wouldn't be teaching the class. So retelling is just, ugh, you know, why would you want to do that? Um, 
Also, do not give the author's biography. So then what do we do? Um, here are some basic approaches. If it's really old and there's problems with knowing what exactly they wrote, uh, then you could do a textual criticism paper. I don't encourage you to try that with any of this stuff. Um, they're pretty mind numbing. Uh, source criticism. Uh, we did that with Hawthorne John Goodman Brown by tracing it back to its source in a Good Man Little Faith in the overall story of Pilgrim's Progress and going back from there to Oh, ye of little faith, oligopiste, uh, when Jesus was, uh, you know, in, in the gospel, especially the gospel of Matthew, it occurs once in Luke and a bunch in Matthew, and it's a new word. It wasn't a word that the uh, classic Greeks uh, used. Uh, instead, it translates uh, some uh, Hebrew, mikron, what is ameth? Is that the word for faith? Anyway, um, so you can go back and say, okay, what does using this source tell us about this story? I mean, it could mean something different, but it might mean something the same. So uh, good man, little face problem of uh, lack of confidence and, uh, you know, being disturbed for the rest of his life. It's a pretty good model for what Brown goes through. All right, so other approaches, psychological, we're familiar with Freud. Uh, Carl Jung is also really popular in English departments. Uh, sociological, uh, there's still some Marxists left in these old English departments, but need, I mean, there are a bunch of sociology approaches. Um, structuralist, that has to do with the way that myths work. And there are a bunch of those guys out there. Oh, and uh, if you're interested, you can look up critical theory playing cards or trading cards. Which has a bunch of these just boil down into one card and then you read the card and decide if you want to try to use that approach. Um, another way to do it is to look through the uh, first several um, articles that you read on your topic and decide, okay, this is an issue. Like um, the reason I wrote an article about faith in young Goodman Brown is I wrote, read several articles that were debating what that was about and there had not been what I thought of as a you know, a definitive answer. And so I was entering into the debate and using source criticism to do it, but it was an established debate. Okay, so first thing I look for is your thesis. Second is your outline, where you have good topic sentences and logical development. And these are based on uh, the same model as the thesis. A topic sentence is exactly the same as a thesis, only it covers a paragraph instead of a whole work. Uh, using details from the story. Okay, people kept saying, what oh, crap, the sorry. My phone started talking. <laughs> um, So yeah, um, I would suggest a couple of quotes from your primary source in each paragraph. They shouldn't be real long, but you should work them in. And then a couple of quotes from your secondary source, which is sources. Um, and we need a total of 10 sources. You need one, at least one primary source, at least one definition from the Oxford English Dictionary. And that means eight articles that you quote from in this, uh, in your uh, research paper and cite in your bibliography. Writing and grammar, these are your basic, uh, you know, English, good English writing. Um, okay, so let's grade a paper together. And are there any questions?
Better. All right. So assume that I am old, over the hill, not that highly motivated anymore. And I'm looking in your research paper for a thesis. Where will I look? The first, first sentence of the introductory paragraph. Okay, the first sentence of the introduction or the last sentence in the introduction. Right. Those are the two places I'm going to look. Don't make me hunt for it. This isn't Easter eggs. Um, you want it to be so obvious that even I cannot miss it, right? All right, so let's check these out and see. Uh, why don't we grade it on the PowerPoint? Let's make that bigger. Okay, so first thing I'm looking for is your thesis. In the novel, Slaughterhouse-Five, or the Children's Crusade by Kurt Vonnegut, the story of Bill, Billy Pilgrim is used to explore various themes about life and war. All right, could that be a thesis? Is he stating an opinion about the book? It's a yes no. or no. No. Actually, yes. Um, the story of Billy Pilgrim is used to explore various things about life and work. I mean, he could make another argument, right? <clears throat> about what he's used for. Um, now, is it a good thesis? N no. Right, why not? It's not strong enough, like in depth enough. Yeah, it's not deep because it's wide and shallow. Various themes about life, the war, and the war, you know, that's like, uh, I don't know, Hitchhiker's Guide, Life, the Universe, and everything. It's just too much, right? Um, so, yeah, I was thinking too, that's what I gave it before. If that's the thesis. Let's look at the last sentence and see if there's an alternative. Vonnegut uses Billy as an example of the possible dangers of believing in predestination and quietism. All right, could that be a thesis? This yes. is an opinion. Yes, it is. And is it a more specific thesis than the other one we looked at? Yes. Right, very much so. What are predestination and quietism anyway? You would need to define that in the story, right? I mean, in your uh, analysis. Anybody know? Yes, sir. You know what predestination is? Yes. What is it? Um, it's the belief that, um, like I know in Christianity, it's that like God has already had a path for you and has decided like heaven or hell, basically. Right. Like yeah, nothing we, you can do can possibly change that. Right. And we talked about that when we talked about uh, Kevinism because they believe yes, in sir. predestination. And it's not just that, but it's like before the world was ever created, God picked out this shirt for me to wear today um, and this haircut. And it explains a lot, right? Uh, why we make these unfortunate choices because they aren't actually choices. It's just a little shadow play that God puts on to amuse himself because eternity is boring. Uh, what's quietism? Good question. <laughs> what word is in quietism that we do recognize? Oh, 
quiet. Quiet, yes, which you seem to be doing very, very well as a class. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm practicing quietism. That's it. Uh, quietism is the ism of keeping quiet. Because everything is predestined, nothing matters, and so it goes. And that's kind of one of the themes of the book is you can't make any difference anyway, so you may as well just coast along. And that's what they want us to believe, right? All right, so what kind of thesis statement would this be if that is indeed the thesis he's using? One, two, three, or four. A three, maybe? Actually, I would give that a four. It is crisp, it is sharp, it is narrow. It's a sharp, sharp pencil you can actually poke yourself with and draw blood. It is, you know, it is that kind of thesis statement. So look at it as an example. Now, how do we find out which one of these our young scholar is using? By reading the rest. Ah, oh, yes, read the rest. So uh, the next thing I'm going to look at is the outline. Now, where am I going to look for topic sentences? Very first sentence. Very first sentence. Put it right there at the top. Make it easy for me, and it, that'll make it easy for you. Um, Vonnegut's anti-war feelings create a major theme that emerges from Slaughterhouse Five. So, is that go more with sentence one or uh, thesis one or thesis two? Thesis one. Yeah, thesis one. So disappointment, right? Billy Pilgrim is used to show the terrible consequences of war. So is that a topic sentence? Is he stating an opinion about the book? Yeah, but I found the uh, first paragraph kind of yeah, really it's, short. Yeah, it is an opinion, and it is growing out of this thesis statement. Uh, so we may as well go ahead and uh, I sort of hate to delete that four, but this is definitely going to be a two. Um, he uses other characters to portray his anti-war theme. Another character, and he's leaving out, it took me a while to figure this out, uh, so don't make me figure stuff out, but another character used to portray the anti-war theme is Roland Weary. Uh, so it's not just another character in general, but it is, you know, about that. The most blatant anti-war discussion, Vonnegut and Mary O'Hare. He uses his characters. So he's saying the same thing a lot, right? Finds his own explanation uh, by the bombing, of the bombing and death of so many people. Um, the phrase, and so it goes, cited any mention of death. Uh, the question of free will and the inevitability. Oh, so he works that in there at some point, but he's doing that in addition to all this other stuff. So instead of being a tightly focused paper that unfolds in a detailed argument about this idea, and he's going to, you know, drop a paragraph or two on it. Uh, Billy's uncaring attitude. So this is quietism, right? Um, so he worked both the first and the last sentence into it. Uh, seems unconcerned with life. You know, today we might say that he has some sort of PTSD rather than that he's truly um, apathetic. Uh, Okay, the moral presented by Vonnegut agrees that some things are out of control, but some things can change. Is that a critique? The dangers. Yeah. So it's kind of a paper with two thesis statements, which is not good. You want to focus on one or the other. Um, and so what he's done, because this is so broad, then the topics covered in the research paper end up being pretty broad as well. 
I think though that despite that, I'm gonna give it a three rather than a two. You know, it, he does have topics in it. He does have some sort of structure um, beyond just the bare minimum. Okay, so what am I looking for next? Next, is this thing on? Detail. Detail from? Notes and sources. The primary source, which is Vonnegut. We need how many per paragraph? Two primary, two secondary. Yeah, and knowing that, all you have to do is look at this and you already know what. Without even reading it, what do you already know about that paragraph? It doesn't have enough quotes. There won't be enough room in that paragraph for enough quotes. So first off, we've got one quote by Vonnegut here. Um, this is, here's another by Vonnegut here, one quote. Um, Vonnegut that we don't actually quote, um, almost one, but not quite one. Um, okay, so here we have Vonnegut talking to Mary O'Hare. Um, so we have two. Ah, it's our first paragraph with two. All right, so I don't think we need to go on. Uh, How's he going to do with C, details from the story? Is this a one, two, three, or four? Three would be generous. <laughs> generous me. All right, so it's definitely not a one, right? Because he does have some quotes. Is there any way for it to be a four? No. No, of course not. Uh, you have to have two quotes per paragraph to get a four on that. So you're going to then be where, what's left. One's out, four out. What's left? Two and three. Two and three. Very good. <laughs> so either a two or a three, depending on my generosity. All right. So let's go back. Same thing with secondary sources. So Vonnegut is our primary. Uh, Cox, therefore, will be a secondary. So that's how many quotes from a secondary source in this paragraph? One. One. All right, so let's continue. Paragraph two, we have Marvin and another Marvin. So that makes... How many? Two. Two, very good. Y'all must be math whizzes, let me tell you. Um, so more Marvin. Um, but just one. That um, 126 would also be Marvin. Yeah, but that's all the same thing. See, so that's just one quote. He just quote, he says it's Marvin, then he puts 126. Uh, if you didn't say Marvin says, then you would put Marvin 126. Okay, so we've got one there, another Marvin. Now, there's another problem beginning to emerge. What is our main secondary source? Do we, are we quoting from all nine, eight of our, nine of our secondary sources? Who are we quoting? We've got Vonnegut. He's our one primary source. Who are we quoting from over and over and over for our secondary? Marvin. Marvin. It's Marvin. Marvin may be marvelous. Marvelous Marvin. But we need to be working more of those sources in than just Marvin. Right now, he's just kind of summarizing Marvin's argument. So be sure you, you know, you may have like 
one or two primary secondary sources you use a lot, but make sure you use them all some, uh, you know, because you've got 10 of these, right? Okay, so here's another Marvin, just one. Um, got only Vonnegut in this one. Uh, Vonnegut, I'm not sure what happened here. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, Lundquist. Uh, only Vonnegut, Marvin, Marvin, Tanner. All right, we've got another person, Tanner. All right, so is there any way for this to be a one or a four? Does he have absolutely no secondary sources? It can't be a one. It cannot be a one. Could it be a four? Mm. I, guess no. I would say two or three. Right. Again, two or three. And probably twos, I mean, threes on this. Um, I see some mistakes, um, but it's not terrible. All right. So that means this could be uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. 15 twos. right? Yeah, and that would be a 67. No, 63. Or if I'm feeling generous and find more stuff than we found in our brief read through, uh, it would be 17, which is a 75%. Okay, so do you see how the grading is? It's just not just my feelings, you know, I'm very really like paint by numbers on this to give you something to shoot for. Um, now, if you can, at the beginning, get yourself a really great thesis, then that means your outline will be better. Now you'll still need to work in your quotes. So it's just simple counting uh, at this point. Yeah, you do need to make an argument with that. Um, so how well are you using your sources? But you can't use sources if you don't have sources. Uh, so we have to at least have the four quotes and then you have to you know, like argue well using them uh, to get a four. It's not just, you know, it's not just, otherwise you could just, you know, not have paragraphs at all, just, you know, drop in a bunch of quotes. We don't do that quite. All right, any questions about grading? The last two things, one of them would be grammar. What's the other one? Uh, writing, let's go over that. Uh, paragraphs are focused, unified, and coherent. Transitions are logical and effective. So that means that your paragraph makes sense. Um, like I was just saying, you have to argue well. Uh, you're not just dropping in quotes, but you're, you know, they have to be set. You know, it's like having a diamond in a box versus a diamond on a necklace or a ring. Uh, there has to be a setting for it. And it has to, you know, it has to all fit together in an aesthetic way. You know, use the word aesthetic. Any more questions? Did we have any more of these? Why don't we do one more? Now, I don't know what it is. What is the writing contest? Winner, 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 chicken dinner. So these are our uh, previous writing contest winners. Let's see if I recognize any of these um, topics. It's harder for me to grade if I've never read something. What's your language? I don't know. Death of a salesman. <sighs> um, undone at the seams. 
like father, like son. I mean, some of these I might know if I clicked on them. What is that? Um, Hunger Games? Hunger Games is cool. Um, I like Marxists, especially with Willie Lemon. Let's take a look at this. Uh, so this won a prize. Maybe it would be pretty good. Wow, we've got quite a long first paragraph. Um, where am I going to look for my top thesis statement? Thesis statement, either the first, in the first paragraph, either the right. first or the last. Right, first paragraph, first sentence or last sentence. In post-depression America, the United States endured internal battles in political ideologies between capitalists and Marxists, which is the focus of author Miller's play, Death of a Salesman. Does that sound like a thesis? Yeah. It does. Um, does it seem somewhat related to the title of the paper? It does. Uh, it does, but nevertheless, ideology. let's check the last sentence. Um, Miller, therefore, was not denouncing capitalism, but calling instead for reforms within the existing system. So that could be the actual thesis, right? Um, so it's not just that he's reflecting a debate, but he's coming down on one side of the debate. So I think that tightens it up. Which would, you know, what kind of grade would we give? Hold on, let me delete this stuff. All right, so how would he do for his thesis statement? I thought it was pretty nice. I think yeah, they're both focused. The crisp, uh, well worded. Either one of those would be a four. Um, all right, so I'm going to look at my first sentence. The Great Depression can arguably be attributed to the avarice of a society engrossed with the attainment of wealth in the early 20th century. So that's the background for the play. According to Nielsen, and that was a topic sentence. Miller designed his character that reveals the corruption of the American free market. So that's a topic sentence. The added struggle for prosperity within Willie is apparent to readers as he is driven mad because of his inability to obtain financial security. In addition to his obsession with material goods, Willie also seeks gratification in taking possession of other people. So do we seem to have good, strong thesis statement topics in it's going go in here? Yes, sir. Yeah, it is an outline. It is following a tight argument. So we're going to give that a four, which is what you would hope from our winner of our writing contest. Okay, now it may be that because they weren't in my class, they weren't following my rule, but let's go ahead and grade it according to the way I grade papers after I've explained it a dozen times. <laughs> All right, so we've got Miller on America. So I think that's Henry Miller, but he's, it's not the story itself. So that would be another primary source, which is fine. Um, Miller on America. Uh, so we've got two, we've got Nielsen. So we've got um, two primary, one secondary. Oh, this is continuing the paragraph. But doesn't introduce any new. Uh, all right, so Miller. Um, Nielsen, Nielsen, Nielsen. Okay, so we're doing great on secondary sources in the second paragraph of the body, uh, just no primary sources. Um, 
electric car. Okay, here's a primary source. Here's a secondary source. Uh, okay, so uh, we see enough. It's not going to be a four because they didn't have enough quotes in every paragraph. And again, to be fair to this essay, they weren't in my class. And so they didn't have the dictum, you must do it this way. So it would, you know, I can see it being a good paper, just according to my criteria, it's not a four and therefore I would give it a three, probably threes for that. Uh, Twenty. So eighty-eight and eighty-three. Eighty-three. And that, you know, just if it didn't have my criteria, then it would clearly be an A paper. But because I have this, okay, you must do this. Uh, you know, hit these hash marks. Um, then that, you know. These instead of being fours are threes. Uh, and so it lowers it to an 83. So, you know, hit the hash marks and then make a good argument based on that. All right, any questions about grading? I have a question about the quotes. Yes. Um, so for, do they just have to be in the body paragraphs or in the introduction and conclusion too? I would not use quotes in the intro and conclusion. It's traditionally, not done, although sometimes people do. Okay. But yeah, the intro and conclusion, you don't have to have them, just the, uh, just the paragraphs in the body. That's right. Good question. All right, anything else? Who's here? Massey, anybody else get here? Edwards. All right, Edwards is just here. Anybody else? Pepper, Pepper get here. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. So let's divide up into our groups. Was there a group that needed to see me right off the top? All right, well, I'll just circulate around then and come see how y'all are doing. I tell you what, there's a thing where instead of me putting each of you into a group, I just open up that number of groups and then you can sign into your group. So as long as you know what group you're in, if you don't, I can tell you, just let me look it up real quick. Oh, I'm gonna stop the recording.